What kind of sponge do you throw with? I'm Jamie Dove, and on this episode of Rebooting My Pottery Business, I talk about sponges. I admit it, I am a sponge snob. And if you ask anybody that knows me as a potter, they're going to tell you the exact same thing. And to say that I'm picky about my sponges, that would be an understatement. And if I lose my sponge, put on some earmuffs because you're going to hear some salty language. And when it comes down to a natural sponge or a, a synthetic sponge, I'm definitely a natural sponge person. There's just something about the texture of the sponge, the way that it feels, the way that it holds water, and how it holds up in general, the longevity of the sponge. Um, synthetic sponges will wear away with clays that have a lot of grog in them. They just kind of get shredded, um, as where a natural sea sponge kind of grows in that environment to begin with. So it seems to, to be a lot more durable in that sense, if you think about that. And I tell you what, I live 10 minutes away from the Gulf of Mexico. I boat, I swim, I dive, I go to the beach here, and I can tell you there are sponges right off the coast of St. Petersburg, Florida. And I am enough of a sponge snob that I am going to jump in the water and harvest my own sponge. I'll be honest with you, the only thing I knew about natural sea sponges is that they were natural and from the sea. And they grew here in the Gulf of Mexico. I spent literally a few minutes Googling the topic and ultimately ended up watching about eight videos on YouTube, which means I'm an expert now. The tropical waters of the Gulf of Mexico create the perfect habitat for all kinds of life. Fish, crabs, starfish, plants, coral, and my target species, sponge. Within the first two minutes of me being in the water, I saw a sponge, but I have no idea what I'm doing and it looked huge. I decided to swim around to look for a more suitable sponge. While I was in the water, I took a moment to absorb my surroundings and appreciate that I live in a tropical paradise. I see a used plastic shopping bag floating in the water. These things are killers, so I grab it and put it in my collection bag so I can dispose of it later. As I swim around the rocks looking for more sponge, I come across all kinds of fish. A spade fish, a mangrove snapper, even a few pinfish just hanging around. While I was checking out the local fish population, I noticed a group of sponges nestled in the rocks. Now these sponges aren't usable, but are still really cool. Check out the brilliant yellow of this guy. Now this sponge makes a soft resting spot for a couple of hermit crabs. Here's a large group of sponge that I found. They look like boulders until I fan off the debris and silt that is accumulated. Once the dirt has been cleared off, you can really see how porous these sponges are. After swimming around and finding all kinds of potential sponges to harvest, I did actually harvest two yellow sponges. One the size of a volleyball, but I had a camera malfunction and only have the aftermath of that harvest. And this one, this is a smaller sponge that was attached to a rock. When I cut the sponges with the knife, I make sure to leave a good amount behind so the remaining sponge will grow back. Now that I've got a couple of sponges in the bag, it's time to head home and process my catch. I know, you're expecting me to hold up a sponge that I harvested off the floor of the Gulf of Mexico and then hold up a piece of pottery that I made using that sponge that I harvested from the Gulf of Mexico. Ah, that would just put a nice pretty bow around the great story I just told, except for I failed miserably. Um, I made one crucial mistake and I did not squeeze the sponge. Um, apparently there's stuff in the sponge called gurry. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, gurry, G-U-R-R-Y. It's supposed to squeeze the sponge and get this stuff out. Um, and if you don't and you let the sponge dry with the stuff in it, it ruins the sponge. So, absolute fail. Uh, I had to go to a plan B. So my plan B, just short of jumping back into the, into the gulf and finding another sponge and starting the whole thing over, uh, the family and I just went up to Tarpon Springs, drove 40 minutes north, went to Tarpon Springs, and that's where you can find the sponge docks. And the sponge docks of Tarpon Springs is considered the sponge capital of the world. Located on the west coast of Florida, where the Anclote River and the Gulf of Mexico meet, 
It's believed that the fresh water coming from the river mixing with the salty gulf water creates an outstanding condition for these animals to grow. Yes, animals. Now I learned that sponges are simple, organless animals, not plants. There are over 9,000 different types of sponges in the world, but only five types are harvested commercially. Now let's go check out the sponge docks. It was like I had died and gone to sponge heaven. Bin after bin of natural sea sponges. There were all shapes, textures, and sizes to suit any need. Even my kids had a blast trying out the sponges. This place ranges from the whimsical to the historical. The sponge docks celebrate and honor the rich Greek sponge diving tradition and community. The main street here is home to many shops and restaurants, and the sponge boats tied to the dock are a constant reminder of the proud history and heritage this community shares with the world. That was a fun little day trip with the family. We uh, went to a couple of shops, and once we got outside, though, I tell you what, the sky just opened up. We had to run for cover, and it, it didn't matter, though. We had a great time. These are the sponges I got at the sponge docks in Tarpon Springs. Now, this sponge here is a wool sponge. It's a great general purpose sponge. Uh, once you dunk it in the water, this thing gets really soft. I mean, you can bathe with it, use it in the shower. Um, you can do dishes with it, wipe down whatever you're gonna wipe down with a sponge. It's just a great general purpose sponge. Now, this sponge, um, this is not from the Gulf of Mexico. This actually comes from the Mediterranean. And this is an elephant ear sponge. This is what a lot of potter's sponges are made of. If you go to like a, a clay store, a pottery supply store, and you buy your little wedge of sponge, um, here, let me see, like this guy right here. This is, this is what you would normally get. This is a medium-sized sponge at a, at a clay store. It's the same sponge as this. I got this thing, if I remember correctly, I believe I paid nine bucks for the medium. I didn't even get the large. I got a medium, because nine bucks is crazy to pay for a little tiny piece of sponge. I paid seven bucks for this whole sponge. So that's cool, because I can like cut this thing up. It'll last for years. This is, I'm in love with this sponge. Um, and, and the cool thing about having a brand new sponge like this is it's like a pair of jeans, like a brand new pair of jeans. They're stiff and scratchy when you first get them. You got to wear them around, get some grass stains on them, you know, just kind of break them in. And then once you do and you wash them a bunch of times, you know, the fibers, they soften up a little bit and it becomes the most comfortable thing you'll ever use. That's why I love a good natural sea sponge, especially the elephant ears. So if you haven't had a chance to, to work with a real natural sea sponge, if you can get to tarpon and get yourself a, you know, a whole chunk of it, that's awesome. Um, if not, you know, buck up and, and pay the price and you know, get, your, get your little wedge. But it's definitely well worth it. Um, beats, beats the heck out of using a synthetic sponge. Go natural, yay. Thank you for checking out the video. I know I had a great time making it. It was a lot of fun. And if you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button. That way you can see all the fun things I do as I reboot my pottery business. And if you know somebody that might get uh, some information or entertainment out of it, please share it with them, you know? Spread the, spread the wealth, share the wealth, enjoy it. Anyway, go have some fun. Go play in the clay. Take care, bye-bye.